Well, welcome to the Racing Blogger Epsom Preview. It's a huge, huge day, not only for Epsom. We've got Aidan O'Brien rolling into town with two top-class Group 1 animals, Highland Reel and Rhododendron. That's a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to hopefully try and break it down, get a few winners for you all, and most importantly, get a winner for the IJF tomorrow. As we all know, Blogger has his absolute bollocks on Rhododendron. But first things first, let's go through the card and find a few winners. So the first race at Epsom, the two o'clock, is a six furlong conditions race. And at the beginning of the week, I tipped up the Brune horse of Richard Hannon's, ridden by Ryan Moore for all of you, at five to two. It's now only 13 to eight. Hopefully a few of you jumped on and took Blogger's tip. This horse was a huge improver. First time out at Newmarket, Ryan was on board, green as grass, didn't run much of a race. Had a break, Richard brought him over to Ripon, and suddenly the horse looked a world beater. I'm hoping that Ryan bounces this out of the gates, goes straight to the front and does what he does done at Ripon last time, and that's lead all the way. Richard Hannon has won three out of the last four runnings of this race. It's a race he particularly targets, and I like that with trainers. I like trainers who target races with the right type of horse who have a previous history. It shows that they know what it takes to win it. The Brune horse is obviously improving. He'll go on the ground, and I think you know his form's there for all to see. Main danger will be Richard Farhees Zap, who was quite impressive at York, Got going really late. I'm hoping the Brune horse has too much speed for that, but that could be the forecast. The Brune horse to beat Zap. Race one done. If you think I'm hot, you should try wearing this. Absolutely roasting. Right, the second race at Epsom is the 235, a one mile class two handicap for horses rated zero to 105. It looks quite competitive, but I think there are two horses we can go to war with. Let's start with Richard Farhees Spring Offensive. Sixth in the race last year, got no run whatsoever, got blocked, got checked, got blocked, but still managed to run an eye-catching race, finishing sixth. Since that race last time, he's kind of been a nearly horse, gone really close at Pontefract, went close at first last time, close at Haydock, and as a consequence, hasn't gone down in the handicap. But we all know Richard Farhees, a bit of a master at keeping horses going and getting wins out of them. Particularly keen on the booking of Andre Atzini, who I think is one of the best jockeys in the country. I think a 10 to 1, each way, he's got to be worth a punt. Now the obvious horse to beat here is GK Chesterton for Charlie Appleby, who's in red hot form. An emphatic, emphatic winner at Newbury last time out where he led all the way. He's only gone up five pounds in the weights. You know, these Godolphin horses could clearly be listed rated horses. And this horse really does take your eye. Top price at the moment, three to one, was available at nine to two earlier on in the week. I think GK Chesterton and Spring Offensive are my two to go to war in the second race at Epsom. 310 at Epsom is the Coronation Cup, run over one mile four. And we've seen some high class performers in this race down the years. I think this race is a little bit below average considering what we've seen recently, but still it's competitive. So let's go through a few of the runners. Air Pilot, say no more, he's an OAP, no go. Frontiersman for Godolphin, Charlie Appleby. Been beating handicappers. I can't see him stepping into group one company and beating horses such as Highland Real. For me, it's a no go. Hawkbill for Godolphin, another Charlie Appleby runner. His best form's on soft ground. I don't particularly think he's going to show his form on this ground drying out. Not for me. Let's skip Highland Reel for now. Idaho seems a bit quirky at times. Is he going to be fully tuned up first time out? Is he going to beat the likely Aidan O'Brien first string? Again, wouldn't be for me. Prize money, not good enough. Red Verdon, Ed Dunlops, not good enough. US Army Ranger, I was very, very disappointed in this horse getting beat at Chester. The years went back, and to me, that shows that this horse has a little bit of a mind of his own. He likes to think about things a bit too much. I think he could be slightly ungenuine. Ryan hasn't chosen him, and that's all I need to know. US Army Ranger, far too many chances, far too many excuses. He's not for me. Elizabeth, Elberth, uh, Andre Bo Andrew Balding's horse, not for me. Journey, an interesting mare. You know, the last three races she's won, she's been beating fillies and mares. You've got to ask yourself, is this John Gosden mare good enough to beat the boys? And for me, the simple answer is no. First time out, she seems to produce her best form later on in the season, winning those epic Group 1 races at cham on Champions Day at Ascot. I don't think she's the one to be on. I think the one to beat really is Aidan O'Brien's first string, Highland Real. He's won four Group 1 races. He's been second in a Judmont. 
He's been second in an Arc de Triomphe when Aidan O'Brien had the top three. Look at this horse's resume. He's one of the best travellers worldwide. Won a race at Santa Anita. Won at Ascot. Won at Chartin. Won at Arlington. He's a genuine top class mile two, mile and a half contender. Ryan should ping this horse out straight to the front. Lay it down to them. I can see him bowling down the hill into the Epsom straight with a good lead. And hopefully he clings on. And this gives us a massive winning boost prior to before the next race when Rhododendron goes on to win the Oaks. But Highland Real, I think he's the one to beat. I'm surprised he's available at 7-4, I've got to be honest with you. You can scrub the run at Maidan last time. The ground was too watered, it was too sloppy. Scrub that run totally. If you take that run away, what price would Highland Real be coming into the Coronation Cup today? Highland Real, the one to beat for me by a mile. The 345 is a 10 furlong handicap for older horses and it looks quite competitive and it is quite a tricky looking race. Andrew Balding always seems to do fairly well at Epsom and he's got a very likely contender in Barocco. An impressive winner on the 26th of April, he was held up off the pace, came flying past banditry, went up four pounds for that run, went over to Chester and chased home the handicap certainty of the year, Sir Michael Stout's Kirat. Since that run, he's only been put up a pound the horse has course form, he's proven over the trip. Andrew Balding particularly targets horses for these big handicaps. I think Barocco is going to be very, very hard to keep out of the frame. And judged on those two runs, he's only gone up five pounds. I think the handicapper may have been a tad soft on him. The second horse I like in this race is Stuart Williams' Examiner. Again, he's got Andre Atzini on board. I'm a big fan of that particular jockey. I think he rides out of his skin, has got a clock in his head. This horse has won at Epsom over a, a mile and half a furlong. Um, you know, he's been slightly inconsistent at times, but I think he's well handicapped, judged on his best form. The rain apparently is going to come overnight. He's got form on good to soft. Stuart Williams is banging in the winners at present, and I do like the jockey booking. Available at the moment, we've got Brocco at 5-1 to one and Examiner at 12-1. to one. Those will be my two bloggers' picks. The 4.30 is the centrepiece at Epsom. It's the Epsom Oaks, a chance for the best fillies in the world to prove themselves on one of the most demanding tracks. 12 furlongs, who will be the champion come half past four? My money is firmly banking on Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. Rhododendron, this daughter of Galileo, was an unlucky loser in the 1,000 guineas behind her stable mate, Winter, who's already gone on to frank the form. Aiden, he's absolutely flying. He could be about to break all of his prior records. You know, there's so much to like about this filly. A mile was never really going to be her best trip. How much will she improve stepping up to 12 furlongs? How much will she improve for a seasonal debut? And I just think it's not the most of most competitive oaks. You know, the Godolphin horse, Sabetsu, the horse who was second in that group one over in France had never won a race before. It's hard to be too confident about the form of that at all. Enable, the form looks decent, but the market vibes are very weak. She's been on the drift all week, four to one, out to seven and a half to one right now. And to me, that seems a bit weird. John Gosden's other filly, Coronet, was behind Sabetsu over in France. I don't see any valid reason for turning that form around. And besides the other horses down below, none of them look good enough. I really do believe Rhododendron is a white dove bet. She has everything going for her today. And if you read Ryan Moore's Betfair column, the Oaks is a good Oaks, but he highlights my filly is very, very good. She was a top class juvenile. We know she would have went close in the 1000 if he didn't get blocked in at that stage. And he has to say here, he's very, very confident going into the race with a huge, huge winning chance. I think Rhododendron will win the Oaks and I think she'll win easy. If you're looking for an each way play, I guess you'd have to be looking at John Gosden's Enable. It could be a naughty each way bet at the current seven to one available. But the Oaks for me is all about one filly. Rhododendron, I think she'll win by five or six lengths. I think she's absolute different gravy. At the moment, the best price available is 10 to 11 on. Hopefully those filthy bookies push her out in the morning. Hopefully we get a bit of 11 to 10, a bit of 5 to 4. Be genuine, be genuous. Give us punters a bit of value and fill your boots if they do. If any of them push them out big time, lads, you know what to do. Hammer this horse home. It wins the Oaks.